How's it going everybody? Welcome back to Sick Eric Tech and today we're going to be going on over the first things you should do when you get your brand new Galaxy A54. We're going to go on over some of the settings and things to change right when you get up your phone and you're setting it up and everything. These are going to be essential to getting you up and running and ready to go with your new device. So before we get started, go ahead and subscribe and click that bell icon that way you don't miss out on future videos just like the one you're about to watch today. So I do got myself a little cheat sheet here for first things you're gonna wanna do. So the first thing you're gonna want to do is check for a software update because when I got mine, there was an update ready for you. So you just want to go into settings and uh, software updates and then you're gonna want to click download and install and it will check for a software update and uh, like i said one was already waiting this was the last software update so it takes you to february 1st security patch so not the latest as far as security goes but still this will do just fine and uh, this will update you to your latest security patch and whatever features that are offered with that last software update so the next thing, if you haven't already done it before when you were setting up your phone, is set up more fingerprints and your biometrics and things like that. If you're setting up your phone, you probably, chances are, you only set up about one uh, fingerprint just to get things rolling. But you can do more, and I suggest that you do more when you go into your settings. Uh, you, could, you could add a fingerprint as well, and I suggest adding whichever your dominant hand is adding two of those so say your thumb add two thumbs and then add you know another finger on there that way when it's laying on the desk you can just tap on it and unlock your device and the more fingerprints you have on there of the same finger the easier it's going to be to recognize it now this fingerprint sensor isn't the best in the world it does take a little longer to uh unlock your device it's not an ultrasonic it's an optical fingerprint sensor so the more the merrier when it comes down to fingerprints and the next thing you're going to want to do is set up your facial recognition as well if you haven't already done that just to make things a little bit easier you could also add an alternative appearance to enhance recognition so if you were wearing glasses or anything like that you could add that on there as well and of course you know check your require open eyes or brighten the screen and other features like that to enhance your facial recognition and your security and uh, to make your fingerprint sensor work a little bit faster when it comes down to that. So next thing you're gonna want to do is set up your home screen, your app grid and your home grid. So that's pretty self-explanatory. You're pretty much just gonna long press on your home screen. And this is where you're gonna set up all your widgets and everything to your liking so you get add widgets to your home screen you could also go into settings and you could change the grid of your home screen grid for all your apps usually i like to do five by five on everything and then four by four on folders and you could also go down here and check out anything else that you want as far as swiping on over on your left hand side for your google discovery or samsung free if you're on t-mobile you could have things like that for me i just have it on google discover and you could have a swipe down for notification panel. Usually that's set by default. And you could go ahead and set everything the way you like it as far as your widgets go. Place them on your home screen. You could also add home screens if you want to. Long press and then swipe on over and then add another home screen. And add whatever the hell you want to add on there when it comes down to widgets. You got so many different options with Samsung to make this device your own. So definitely set up your home screen exactly the way you like it so going on over to the next thing is going to be micro sd cards so yes guys pick your old micro sd card up from the floor and take it away from your cats because this device supports micro sd yes your 15 to 20 gigabytes worth of download of music you could install on this bad boy and be rocking. You could start saving all your photos and video to your micro SD card uh, on your brand new Galaxy A54. So you're pretty much going to open it up from the top and take this out and you get your SIM card on one side. And then on the other side, you get your micro SD card slot. You're just pretty much gonna want to install it upside down just like so. 
and make sure that's in there and then go ahead and slap it in and you're going to be ready to go when it comes down to micro sd card support on your device so the next time you open up your camera it should read it and should ask you where do you want to save your start change location to sd card and you can go ahead and change that that way everything starts saving to your sd card and you don't run up the storage on your actual device so that's fantastic that you have micro sd card support on the galaxy a54 so next thing you're going to want to do is download your favorite wallpaper app on here so for me i like to go ahead and use uh, backdrops just because they use a lot of fantastic wallpapers on here uh, a lot of dark wallpapers that you can see the wallpaper I have right now hides those bezels quite nicely on here to where you don't notice them as much with this black border going around on there and they have a lot to choose from here on backdrops a bunch of wallpapers to choose from on here you could also uh, start searching on here you could search by color you could do blue green orange red purple teal pink black and white so a lot of wallpapers to choose from. They're all free. Everything on here is free. And when you download it and you could just hit set. And when you hit set, it's going to give you the option to home screen, lock screen, or both. Or you could use set with if you're using a different launcher or anything like that. But the wallpapers on Backdrop are absolutely fantastic. So check out Backdrop Wallpapers. So once you're done with your wallpapers, you're going to want to make sure everything as far as your color scheme is matching your wallpapers. So once you found your favorite wallpaper, you're going to go ahead and go into wallpaper and styles and you're going to choose your color palette to match or closely match your wallpaper. As you know, color palette takes colors from your current wallpaper and will separate them to where you could have everything match your color scheme. You could also apply this to your icons. So when you hit apply, everything is going to be matching. So when you go back home, as you can see, your icons have changed, your notification panel has changed, your quick setting toggles, everything has changed to match whatever wallpaper you have used on here. So wallpapers and themes to change everything as far as color wise to your current wallpaper. So the next thing you're gonna want to do is choose between your messaging app either Google or Samsung. So Samsung offers two apps of almost everything on their devices. They offer two browsers. You get Chrome and Samsung browser. You get Samsung messages and Google messages. And you also get an option for Samsung keyboard. So Samsung duplicates everything. So here's the time to decide whether you wanna be Samsung or Google. And for me, I like to use Samsung messaging app on here just because it's easier. And you want to make sure that you're using the correct messaging app that you want to. So you're going to go into settings and you're going to hit choose default apps. And here is going to give you the options to choose what apps you want. So your browser app, you could either choose Chrome or Samsung. And for your messaging SMS app, you could either chose, choose uh, Google or Samsung. And here is where you're going to want to make that decision on which one you're going to want to use from here on out. Google or Samsung's native messaging app. And then you can go ahead and decide that from here on out, which one you're going to want to use. And the same thing goes for keyboards so you're going to want to choose your default keyboard you could download gboard from the play store and start using that personally i love gboard just because all my password management is already saved to google i haven't really saved anything to samsung pass and you could choose which keyboard you want to do again on the default apps section you could choose everything as well as far as your keyboard and when you're typing on everything uh, you could go ahead and choose what your default keyboard is on here as well. Of course, default keyboard, you could choose between Google or Samsung, whichever one you like to use. Like I said, it depends on you. So next thing on the list is going to be set up and organize your camera when it comes down to modes. So here on the bottom is what I'm talking about here. You get your pro, you get your pro video, portrait, night, photo video and more and when you hit this little plus button on here now you can start dragging and dropping certain uh modes that you want in here so say you want macro right next to 
night mode, you could do that or you could remove macro altogether. You could start organizing everything when it comes down to which position you want everything in at the bottom. That way when you open up your smartphone or your camera app, you got everything in order of what you want to use, whether it's portrait video or pro uh, video or pro mode. You have everything right here that you need and everything that you don't need, you could just go ahead and keep it over here as far as that goes. So very nice and easy to set everything up on here. And then you could also, while you're at it here, go ahead and go into your settings and change anything that you want to change. When it comes down to scene optimizer or having a watermark on your device, you could go ahead and do all of that right here and change everything. You could also make sure that you are on your correct uh, filming mode. So when you're in video, you're gonna want to make sure that you are on UHD 30, which is 4K 30 frames per second. And for your front facing camera, you could also choose that on there because I think out of the box, it's at full HD. So you're gonna wanna make sure that you're recording at the most optimal uh, video quality on your smartphone when you start up this camera. Next thing you're gonna want to do is edit your quick panel and buttons. And what I'm talking about here is going to be up here with your toggles and your quick panels. So what you're gonna want to do is go ahead and click up here and you're gonna want to edit your buttons. And once you hit right here, now you can start dragging and dropping everything that you want. And then you could also remove things that you don't want, like say Wi-Fi calling. I could go ahead and remove that from my panel and you could add everything and vice versa and make sure that everything is nicely organized in the order that you want it for your quick panels. That way when you swipe down, you got everything in order of what you want for me. I like Dolby front and center right there just so I could switch modes. And then you could also change it to where you have device control and media outputs uh, when it comes down to where you want it. Your brightness slider, you can have it show always or when the quick panel is extended. And the same thing goes for device uh, and media controls. You could always show or show when the panel is expanded. So for me, uh, it doesn't show right here, but the brightness shows, but then when you uh, expand all the way then you start getting your device control and media output on there so now is the time to go ahead and organize everything and make sure all the toggles are where you want them to be so next thing on the list is going to be an old school classic and that is activating developer options and changing your animation speeds now this device does come with 120 hertz refresh rate but you all know that the transitions and animations on samsung are a bit slow and to activate this all you're pretty much going to do is go into phone then you're going to go into developer options and keep scrolling uh till you get down to let's go ahead and keep on going to window animations it's going to be under the drawing section transition animation scale and animator duration scale and you're going to set all of these at 0.5 they are all set to one times and that is a bit slow but not the slowest in the world but 0.5 will definitely speed things up quite a bit when it comes down to your animations and your scrolling and switching between pages it'll just make things feel a lot faster and a lot more snappier when it comes down to that animation speed so the next thing is going to check out your RAM Plus. So when you go into settings and you go into device, care, and battery, you're gonna go into memory. And here you're gonna find the option for RAM Plus. And by default, it is set to four gigabytes, which takes uh, RAM from your storage. It pretty much uses your storage to provide virtual memory uh, for more apps to stay open and things like that. And by default, it has it's at four, you can make it to where it's at two or six, or you could just turn it off altogether if you don't want that extra RAM or that extra punch when it comes down to productivity. Keep in mind when you switch on here or turn it off, you're going to have to restart your phone. So make sure that you have it to where you want it. That way you're not you know, having to reboot your phone all the time, switching between different options on here. But RAM Plus, definitely cool that they brought this on over from the S series. Definitely helps a lot, but it will take from your storage, but not that much. But it definitely helps with that RAM and to make the phone run a little bit smoother. So the last thing on the list is going to set up your notifications and pop-ups for all your notifications. So if you go on to your settings and click on notifications, you're gonna hit on notification pop-up style 
and I think uh, by default it is on brief to where it won't really show any details but you could also make it to where it shows detail on there that way everything when you get a notification it would show everything that you need to show say it's a message or things like that you could also go into your lock screen and choose whether or not you want notifications to show on your lock screen as well and then you could also go into your uh, sounds and vibrations and change all your notification settings and things like that if you want to you could go into your apps and make sure that every app that you want to sh to uh, give you notifications is activated and then you could also deactivate whichever ones you don't want to be notified on such as you know bixby voice and chrome and things like that you could go ahead and deactivate those and just make it to where you want notifications from the apps that you want and the apps that you use say like gmail instagram facebook messaging of course and things like that you can control all of that right here with notifications and your pop-ups and things like that so very cool to set up everything on your device hopefully you guys are enjoying your brand new galaxy a54 if you picked one up and if you're watching this video because why the hell will you be watching this video if you do not have a galaxy a54 so thank you guys for watching if you enjoyed this video and found it useful give it a thumbs up if you didn't give it a thumbs down and i will see you next time here on sick eric tech peace